I just stumbled across absolute proof that George R.R. R. Martin will never finish A Song of Ice and Fire. I've read all the books in A Song of Ice and Fire, but recently I found an admission that he will never finish that series in the most unlikely of places. First, some background. It took Martin a total of 15 years to write the first five books in his seven book series, but since the release of A Dance with Dragons in 2011, we have had 13 years with only a string of flimsy excuses to show for it. Here's the timeline. In 2010, Martin says the first chapters are done. In 2011, Martin says he's been guilty of excess optimism. It's no big deal. You just wrote A Dance with Dragons. You have plenty of time. In 2012, Martin admits he sucks at making predictions, but he thinks he's going to be done with the book in 2014. Three years later, in 2015, Martin says the book isn't coming out this year. But that's alright. On average, it takes him about four or five years for a new book in the series, so that's expected. Then, later in 2015, he said he's going to skip Comic-Con to wrap up the book so it can be released in 2016, right on schedule. 2016 comes around and we have no book. 2017, he says, okay, now 2017 is a release date. 2018 comes around, Martin announces that the book will come out, but it's not Winds of Winter, it's another one. Okay. 2019, George R.R. R. Martin says this, If I don't have the winds of winter in hand when I arrive in New Zealand for Worldcon, you have my formal written permission to imprison me in a small cabin. 2020, no winds of winter, no imprisonment. 2023, I made a lot of progress on winds in 2020 and less in 2021. It's been 13 years and just recently he said it will be out in November of 2023 despite the book being three fourths of the way done by his own admission. Don't worry, they're coming. Not just two pizzas, there's, there's gonna be five and they're gonna be huge, you won't believe it. So what's going on here? To find our answer, we have to look away from A Song of Ice and Fire and turn our attention towards House of the Dragon. After the digital abortion that was Series 8 of Game of Thrones, I did not have high hopes for House of the Dragon. But to my delight, this series distills the essence of Game of Thrones into every single episode. You got dragons, political intrigue, and breasts! Good job, House of the Dragon! You know what we're tuning in for! But after the end of season 1, I didn't want to wait for 2 years to see what would happen, so I picked up Fire and Blood. And while the book is great, there was a little tidbit hidden at the end of the book that revealed a horrible truth to me. A truth more terrible than any twist or turn in George R.R. R. Martin's books. It was spelled out plainly to me. George R.R. R. Martin will never, ever finish A Song of Ice and Fire. Now, under normal circumstances, I would be sympathetic to this guy. And for a long time, I was. Writing is hard, folks. It's not an easy trade. Especially if you're a 70-something-year-old overweight fisherman-looking guy that gets hauled to every Comic-Con to take pictures with stinky basement people. But here's the thing about George. I think he lacks the discipline to actually sit down and treat writing these books as a job. And this just isn't speculation. At the end of Fire and Blood, there is a section where Martin is interviewed, and it reveals a bit about the way he writes. It revealed he sucks at writing, and it made me want to cry. On page 721, when asked about how he came up with Game of Thrones, he says this. I started writing a novel called Avalon, but then one day, suddenly, this chapter came to me, almost performed in my head, and it was the chapter where Bran finds the direwolf pups in the summer snow. And then he says, So I put Avalon on the side. I put it back in a drawer. By the time I finished that chapter, Bran and the Direwolves, I already knew what the next chapter had to be. So I went on and I wrote that, and I wrote the one after that. This is insanely odd to anyone who has published before. Oftentimes, before a writer even puts pen to page on a massive series, they engage in the insane undertaking of planning out the story. Even if this undertaking is something as simple as a diagram of what's going to happen, it makes it so the writing process is streamlined. You don't have to stop and say, Huh, I wonder what the man's gonna say next. Because you spent six months figuring out all that shit. I don't, I don't have a formal outline. I'm not one of these writers who uh, outlines every, what's gonna be in every scene, what's gonna be in every chapter. Oh. Also, the fact that he cast aside a project on a whim bodes badly for A Song of Ice and Fire. We've seen George focus on plenty of side projects instead of writing Winds of Winter. Does that mean he's giving A Song of Ice and Fire the same treatment as Avalon? There's really no way of knowing. 
but the answer is yes. Also, uh, you may not know, but there's this book that I'm writing. It's a little late. <laughs> uh, go fuck yourself. All right, let's continue. On page 723, when asked about how he comes up with this immense world, he says this. At some point in the process, I said, hmm, I'd better have a map. So I got out a piece of typing paper, and initially I found a map of Ireland and turned it upside down. In the book, people occasionally mention the king, or the old king, and Aegon the Conqueror. <laughs> well, I'd better sit down at some point and figure out who these kings are. Holy shit, this guy is just winging it. When you are working on a project as extensive and complicated as a fantasy epic, I really feel that by not planning things out, even at the most basic level, you just dig yourself into a hole where writing becomes harder and harder. I mean, if I was George, I would think that it would sometimes be a daunting task, more so nowadays than when he began in 1991, because the world has become so much bigger and has become so much more complex. Oh, wait. On page 724, he says those exact words. The entire interview has tidbits where it sounds like George R.R. R. Martin is practically screaming for help. I mean, can you blame him for moving on to other projects? The man's painted himself into a corner and now he can't get out. On a side note, one thing that I as a Tolkien fan find personally insulting is that he frequently draws a comparison between himself and Tolkien and basically says, it's okay, Tolkien didn't plan out everything when he wrote Lord of the Rings. Not only is that completely untrue, but let's look at the quality of Tolkien's writing compared to George. Arise! Arise, fighters of Theoden! Spears shall be shaken! Shields shall be splintered! A sword day! A red day! And the sun rises! Break on. Dick on. <laughs> Many that live deserve death, and some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them, Frodo? Do not be too eager to deal out death and judgment. Even the very wise can assume ends. Does she like it gentle or rough? A finger in the bum. <laughs> You want a good girl, but you need a bad pussy. Yeah, you ain't no Tolkien, George. <laughs> that comparison is completely unfair. I'm gonna write a comment to let him know that George R.R. R. Martin didn't write those seasons. I'm livid at this comparison! Also, you're factually wrong about how Tolkien wrote. Tolkien literally spent hundreds and hundreds of hours building his world before he ever started writing about Frodo and the Fellowship. He wrote about the history of various races spanning thousands of years and included details so insane that only a crazy person would think of them. The man made his own language for God's sakes. That would be like me, Pancake Sean, saying, well, Mr. Beast and I are basically the same because we both make YouTube videos. Problem is, I don't have 100 million subscribers and I don't scream like a man-child in the first five seconds of my videos. I scream like a man-child midway through my videos. Anyway, Jorge goes on to talk about a bunch of bad shit in this revealing interview. But let's go ahead and look at how a real writer writes his book. My man Stephen King has written so many books, no one is really sure how many books he's written. I've read 24 Stephen King books, and that is about a third of all the books he's made. While they vary in quality, I've never read one that I didn't think was great. The man is a cocaine-fueled machine who once wrote an entire book on a bender, and he doesn't even remember writing it. So how does he do it? Is Stephen King just a better writer? Is cocaine the secret to masterpieces? Whenever I do cocaine, I just end up listening to 80s music and playing Pac-Man until I think real ghosts are chasing me. <sighs> <sighs> Fuck off, ghosts! I'm trying to make a YouTube video! Anyway, is there something that Stephen King is doing that George could learn from? In Stephen King's excellent book, On Writing, he outlines his writing process and gives us a glimpse into how he approaches books. On page 153, he says, 
Once I start work on a project, I don't stop and I don't slow down unless I absolutely have to. He also says that you should quote, read and write four to six hours a day. If you cannot find the time for that, you can't expect to be a good writer. Basically, he commits to it. Later in the book, Esteban goes into detail about the writing process, and while I can't find the page, I recall he mentions that it's like going into a mine. It's not fun. It's not easy. But you pick away at an idea over and over again, and eventually, you'll strike gold. His whole approach seems to be based on discipline rather than innate talent. And he's not the only one who takes this disciplined approach. John Grisham, Margaret Atwood, Ian Fleming, Justin Cronin, and R.L. Stein all commit to writing 1,000 to 2,000 words a day no matter what. And some of them have been dead for years. Some writers do even more, with Kazu Ishiguro and Dean Kuntz committing to five whole pages a day. If The Winds of Winter is going to be 1,000 pages long and we do some simple math over 13 years, George R.R. R. Martin could have written just one-fourth of a page a day and had it released by now. Get off your ass, George! A fourth of a page is less than my kid has to do for her English homework. The number of words you write isn't necessarily the point here, but rather it's the discipline. I believe that discipline creates talent. So what's that got to do with Mr. 13 Year Delay? Well, to put it simply, I don't think George is disciplined. I think he's the sort of writer who writes when the mood strikes him and lets his emotions carry him from one project to the next. And when he gets bored of something, he just stops. And what better person to support my claim that George R.R. R. Martin lacks for focus than George R.R. R. Martin himself? You do hit six pages a day? I usually do. You don't ever have a day where you sit down there and it's like constipation and you write a sentence and you hate the sentence and Okay. You, you, you check your email yeah. and you wonder if you had any talent. Tolkien didn't stop. Not even when there was a world war. Look, I'm not saying writing or any creative endeavor is easy. It's a horrible, long, drawn-out process where it takes you years to see the fruits of your daily labor. And sometimes those fruits are rotten. Take it from me. I published a book when I was in my 20s. Let's see how that's going. <laughs> I'm certainly not on the level of someone like Martin or King. I'm not even on the level of Mayer or Hilton. But I write every single day, whether it's for a video or a novel or whatever. If I become rich and famous, great. But that's not why you write. You write because you have an innate need to put pen to page. Your brain gets filled with all this crap and if you don't put it down, you feel awful. Then next thing you know, you have four notebooks full of maps and notes and you look like a crazy person. You've ignored your wife and darling child for weeks to scribble obtuse fake geography and people in a little notebook. But you'll finish the book soon. The whole family is going up to a ski resort that closes down for the winter. And while you take care of the place, you'll probably finish your book. Your kid is bringing their big wheel and the wife is cool with it. Everything should work out fine. <laughs> George seems to think there's two types of writers. I'll call them the architect and the gardener. The architect would be the writer that plans out everything, stays focused, and works a project to completion, while the gardener is someone who starts writing on a whim and waits to see what will come of their story. Wait a minute. That's exactly what George said on page 723. He said he's 97% a gardener. I'd say you're 97% unfocused. As we previously noted, the gardener sort of writer doesn't really seem to exist. Sure, not every single book needs an outline, and for someone like Stephen King, he actually doesn't use outlines, but he's been writing for 50 years, and most of his books are standalone novels rather than being part of a series. There's no one right way of writing, but nearly all the famous writers seem to have a diligence to their craft and they plan out their shit pretty well. Again, don't take it from me. In On Writing, Stephen King says this, Amateurs sit and wait for inspiration. The rest of us just get up and go to work. So get your ass to work, George. I'm tired of waiting. Also, you're not going to be around forever, buddy. While George has made a fantastic fantasy universe that rivals the works of Rowling, Lewis, and perhaps even Tolkien, all those people finished their books because they were focused and had a plan. Look, I'm not saying George is a bad writer. I think by and large his books are phenomenal. 
His language is fantastic, the characters are well written, and the plot is engaging. But I would strongly argue that George is really, really bad at the craft of writing. Take it from me, my book is terrible. Seriously, don't buy it. I wrote it when I was a teenager, and it is written like it was written by a teenager. But you know what? I kept writing. That book was part of a trilogy, and I completed the whole thing by the time I was 22. It's in a few boxes in my closet. I took a break for a few years to get married, have a kid, and become an alcoholic. But now I'm back to writing at least 1,000 words every single day. And I have a few more completed novels I may want to publish someday. And a YouTube channel that's doing alright. Besides shitting on George R.R. Martin and saying he's an undisciplined writer who didn't plan his shit out, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. If you want to be a writer, plan your shit out and practice your craft. Diligence breeds excellence every single time. And I'm done waiting for Giorgio to get his shit together. This interview and the massive delay for Winds of Winter have absolutely proven this man drops projects when they get too hard and doesn't really practice his craft as he should. Don't believe me? Well, have you ever read Avalon by George R.R. R. Martin? Me neither. No one has. It's still sitting in that drawer gathering dust because it got too hard for him to write. George, I love your series, but if somehow you see this, please, for the love of God, Stop it. Get some help. There's no shame in reaching out to those around you for help finishing this huge project. Even if you were 20 years younger and not a fat fisherman, I would be concerned about your ability to finish this poorly planned series. I'm sure there are people around you who know this world more than you do, and they could probably help you. It may even be good to name a successor to carry on your legacy when you die. You know, like King Jaehaerys I. Robert Jordan did that with the Wheel of Time, and it worked out in the end. Be like Jaehaerys, George. Not like Aegon the Conqueror who had disputed succession because he fucked everything up. See, I wasn't lying when I said I read your books. I like them a lot. You just need some help. Hell, I'll help you at this rate. My book is a pile of garbage and the first in a trilogy that was never released. But I've written the whole trilogy and I might put it online for free someday for the three fans I have. At the end of the day, I don't want to just shit on you, George. I want to read your books. I have a section on my bookshelf that I call The Big Boys. It's where I put my favorite fantasy books, and the first five books in A Song of Ice and Fire are there. I'd love to see the next two come out so I can add them to the rest. And if you don't finish them, well, that just kind of sucks.